All right, all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to no. 20... What? No. Is, is, that, is that not cool anymore? Carol Baskin. Dude, she's innocent. Can we just... Can we just... She's innocent, dude. The guy no. ran off. She was a crazy broad. He took off. No, packed, free... he packed his bags, took his toys. He left the country. Free Joe Exotic. Free Joe Exotic. He did get screwed. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That little rat bastard, bald, scullet guy... Wearing the bandanas, dude. He tried to get him killed, and then oh, and yeah. then when it didn't happen, they they swerved him and blamed him on all those. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. I really thought I really thought they were going to pardon him. I really thought he thought so too. He had a limo waiting for him. He didn't get a pardon. So bummed. You know, it's we, it's funny because when part two of that show came out, all of my friends like they moved on, and so they never it, even it, watched it. It sucked. It sucked. It was it was nothing like part one. Brooke and I tried to watch it. We got like two episodes in and we were like, this is not the same at all. Like it it sucked. Yeah. I, I mean I watched it, but my thing is like I was trying to tell people, like, no, 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 no. Like that one like kind of hobo dude that was like a uh, working for the skullet guy, all he does is say how no, we I'm telling you right now, because I don't want to die with this on my conscience that we, we were trying to set him up. Mm -hmm. Joe Exotic, and I was like, guys, you got to check that out. It's nowhere near as is is entertaining, without question. The first no, one, no, it's more yeah, because it's more just like interview format and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I liked seeing all the videos of Joe Exotic back in the fool and all of his music videos and stuff. You know, that was that's I'm, what I was into. Yeah, I'm never gonna financially recover from this. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, shit, man. Yeah, free Joe Exotic. Um, Happy New Year and all that shit. My Christmas tree's still up. I'm taking it down tomorrow. Don't worry. I'm taking it down tomorrow. Um, yeah. I took mine down like a day after. I <clears throat> I miss Halloween time so much. I feel like I took it for granted. I know I didn't, but I, I don't know what it is. I just miss it really, really, really bad. No, let's be honest. No, no. You You took it for granted, and so did I. We, we both openly talked about how we didn't watch as many horror movies this October as we normally do. And yeah, no, I took it for granted too. I, I like, I, I'm totally honest. I guess I did. I took it for granted because I mean, obviously I had a lot of shit going on in October. So like I was nowhere near in the right frame of mind to like even give a shit enough. But yeah, I regret it. I, I regret taking it for granted, but Hey, it, eight months from now we'll be right oh. back on that train. So yeah. I didn't even go to Spirit that much this year. I think I went like three times. Same. I went three times. And I didn't buy a whole lot either. I only I only made one Spirit video. Normally, I make one every time I go. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild, man. It, I, I think I don't even think it was just us. I don't know. I was getting this weird vibe that a lot of people were taking it for granted this year. Same thing with Christmas. Like, I, I feel like this holiday season, like, for me, the holiday season starts October 1st because you go... Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, back to back to back. So it's like once October 1st hits, you're like, it's about to be a fun three months. And I feel like it was just taken for granted as a whole by a lot of people. That, and I know for me in Sydney, there's this store called At Home. I don't know if you have one of those. It's a pretty big yeah. outdoor. And they will put Halloween stuff out, I shit you not, in June. So when summer hits, we're already <laughs> geared up. And we're like, we're yeah. already hitting up. And it's like I start so early that by the time October comes around, I guess I am just like, oh, you know? Yeah. No, man, I feel I feel you. I feel you. But hey, um, yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Um, you get anything cool for Christmas? Anything that stood out to you? We didn't ask on the last episode. Was there anything that like was like, oh, fuck yeah. Mm. My mom got me a vinyl that I was excited about. She got me Alice Cooper live in uh, Paris from 2018. And I was listening to that the other day. Other than that, man, uh, Sydney got, I mean, me and Sydney get each other's gifts. My, my family, they kind of, I remember I was telling you about this in the episode. They don't want to do gifts. They're just yeah. like, I oh, don't worry about it. But my, I, I weaseled my mom into getting me that vinyl of Alice Cooper. So I got that. And Sydney got me a nightmare on Elm street, uh, crew neck from dumb good this store you may see their stuff advertised on instagram and that was really cool so i got some i got some i got a little bit of this and a little bit of that i finally got the uh 
and and I should say before people go, you didn't own this. I didn't own this on purpose because I didn't want to settle for this set. Christian's talked about this set many times, and but honestly, it's the best you can do right now. So I finally got it as a gift, the Nightmare on Elm Street Blu-ray set. Um, I just didn't want to settle for that set, but I mean, I got it as a gift, so I said, "Fuck it." Um, got an Annabelle. I got a little Annabelle. Nice. Uh, it's like like a NECA in yeah. the chair and everything. That's pretty cool. Um, and obviously, I'm a football guy, so I got a Kenny Pickett jersey. I was stoked about that. Um, but I don't get a lot anymore. You know, my mom was like, "You're married and you're an adult. You get like three gifts." Right. I'm like, all right, whatever. So, I know it sucks. I want to go back in time. And I didn't have to buy Halloween ends. Justin, uh, Justin sent me that for Christmas. I just got it in the mail today, um, the Blu-ray, but uh, well, the 4K. So thank you, Justin. Um, I'm excited to dig into those deleted scenes and whatnot. I, I, I really am. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it was like you said, man, I care more about getting people gifts than, than receiving them. Like, I don't know. There's just something about like, I like getting people cool shit. It's just, it may, it's cool to me um so yeah oh and my brother got me an xbox series s um god damn really yeah that, oh you can play 4ks on those can't you yeah i i don't i don't know i i still haven't set it up uh i still haven't set it up because i have to wipe my xbox one clean and then log in to, like to my email and bring up my microsoft account on that one and then re-download all of my games all my apps which is going to take hours uh -huh. so i just have i haven't done it yet and he he said something the other day he's like bro why haven't you? it's still sitting in the box i'm looking at it right now it's, it's a nice xbox but i'm like dude it's going to take <clears throat> hours i'm not gonna be able to do anything while that's yeah because that's that's what i use to watch movies to to watch all my app like my streaming services and stuff if it's like booting up and re-downloading everything what am i gonna do for like multiple hours yeah you need to let that go while you're at work yeah, so that's what I'm going to do this week, I think. But yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool. Like, it was it was a good Christmas, all things considered. So That's good. You know, so I know that everybody was telling me that... Uh, my So my Xbox One, it's done. It, it it makes this horrible sound when you put a disc in, and, and I can't get anything to read. So I finally put it to bed. And me and Sydney wanted to get, we wanted to get a PlayStation 5 or whatever, or the new Xbox, but they're still pretty, the price tags are pretty hefty on those. And what I really want to do is play Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I really want to yeah. play Evil, I want to play Evil Dead as well, which I still think we can when I get that. And I've, I would maxed, love... <laughs> I've maxed out every Survivor character on Evil Dead, so I've kind of gotten burnt out. I've, I've leveled them all up, all the yeah. way, so I'm just like, eh. Well, that's what I want to do for sure. Everybody said, and I'm not into the new game world I, I still blow on my games to get them to play right but they said you can take texas chainsaw massacre and if you have an xbox and i have a playstation we can still play yeah they they created uh not it was like i don't know exactly how long ago it was you know more apt gamers would know but you can do cross play now so Good. like what when, when i play evil dead i play people all the time like on my same team that'll be using playstation or pc yeah okay so cool so check this out so me and Sydney in a few weeks or whatever, I'm going to, I'm actually was going to take a bunch of old DVDs and bring them in for some store credit and go to my game exchange and get a PlayStation four. When Texas Chainsaw Massacre comes out, I want to record. If we can figure out, you probably would know better than I can. I have a Twitch account or whatever. I want to record us playing and having audio, if that's possible, headsets or whatever we got to do. And make that an episode where we play and chit chat while we're playing and shit. And I think that'd be really, really, really cool. Yeah. And even if we, even if I don't really know, my brother knows he uses Twitch for like Madden and stuff. And I know Piz, I know Piz knows a lot about Twitch. So I'm sure we could find somebody to educate us on how to do it. Yeah. But yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, I told you, I don't really buy new video games. Like, unless it's something I really want to play, like Evil Dead, the day it came out, I went and bought it. Of course, of course I'm going to buy right. it. Um, and Texas Chainsaw, yeah, I'm going to buy that too. Um, so I'm super yeah. excited about Texas Chainsaw, dude. I really hope it's like Friday the 13th and you can get the download the part three Leatherface and then get the remake Leatherface and they both have different attributes. And 
I it's think on media. So you you'd really like Evil Dead because that update they did in September, you now can play on like Castle Condor and like you explore the whole fucking thing, the whole castle, like the outskirts and the, the villages and everything in the castle. It's really cool. Yeah, damn it. There, hey, there was this other video game we, me and Sydney used to see that looked really cool. It was <laughs> called the the Quarry, and it looked like some kind of slasher horror game that came out. It was sometime it. last year. Yeah. Uh, anyway. We'll move on, but I, I am excited for that. So, all right, Nick. So this is what we're doing today. Paste Magazine did the top 100 best horror movies of all time. Now, here are a few ground rules, I guess. Some of these we're going to breeze through, right? It's a hundred mm-hmm. of them. Um, we'll comment as we go along. But the preface I want to do is a few things. Three things. We'll take your favorite horror movie, which is Halloween. And even mm-hmm. though it's not my favorite horror movie, but I'll take a Nightmare on Elm Street, and we're both gonna get, we're gonna do three guesses. I want us to guess what number fifty is. I want us to guess what number one is, and then I want you to guess where each of our respective movies are gonna be placed, just to see how close we are. So you can give me your number fifty. You tell me what you think number one is, and then tell me where you think Halloween is, and I'll do the same. But I'll guess where Nightmare on Elm Street is. <laughs> And we'll just kind of see where we're at gauged with this list because it could be a stupid list. It could be a pretty good list. I don't know. I'm going to say number 50 is probably something like Insidious, maybe. Uh, Insidious might be higher, but let's just say Insidious. I'm going to guess number one is The Exorcist or Psycho, but I'm leaning more toward The Exorcist, so I'll say The Exorcist. And I think Halloween's probably going to come in somewhere at like four or five. That's what I would say. Because this is scary. It's not best, right? Um, best. Um, Which ha- I, ha- I, Halloween? Halloween's probably going to come in at three. If it's best, I'm going to say Psycho's number one. Okay. I'm going to say number 50 is going to be M. Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense. I'm going to say number one is going to be Psycho, although I wouldn't agree with that personally. And I think Nightmare on Elm Street is going to be number 10. So Chris I haven't looked, looked through all of it. He's got all the answers. I haven't, which is why I'm actually excited. I stopped myself from looking because I, I wanted to naturally. So Sydney looked at the list and she was like, it's got a little bullshit on there. <laughs> so, Can't wait. Can't and there's wait. probably, like I said to you earlier, and listen, guys, there's going to be movies. There's got to be some movies in here that neither of us have seen, especially if it's like from the, I don't know, the 30s or the 20s. Maybe I've seen it. Maybe Nick's seen it. But look, if you've seen every movie on this list, God bless you. Number 100, The Blair Witch Project. This is some bullshit. That should be <laughs> way higher. That should be number 25. Jesus. Uh, I'm already mad at this list, dude. I mean, okay. One, yes, it should be on the list, but it should be way higher. Way higher. I agree. <sighs> number 99. Here we go. I, I, neither of us have seen this. Haxon or Witchcraft Through the Ages from 1922. Here's an image from that movie, though. Look at that weird ghoulie thing. Uh, Haxon is presented as a historical documentary and warning against hysteria, but in function, it plays much more like a true horror film, especially considering the time frame when it arrived in Danish and Swedish cinemas. Um, there you go. So it's probably some, mm. I don't know if it's a silent film or not. Anyway. Oh God. Number 13. Wait, 13. Nine, Number I th- Number 98, excuse me. This that shows the year of the film 2013. I got confused. <laughs> Number 98. James Wan's The, uh, don't the Conjuring. <laughs> okay, Nick. No, let me ask you this though. Would you put the Blair Witch ahead of The Conjuring, or do you think it deserves to stay behind it? I mean, there's going to be some people like, well, this is just showing your age, but 
No, it's really not. I, the Conjuring should be above the Blair Witch, in my opinion. The, the Conjuring should be like top twenty, in my opinion. It was, it was literally, it, it was the scariest movie theater experience I've ever had. I ever had was the Conjuring, and I mean, yeah, that's. I, it was this generation's Blair Witch. I really believe that. I and some people might go, Paranormal Activity, maybe, but like Paranormal Activity is. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Paranormal Activity is good, but I don't even think the first one's the best one. I think Paranormal Activity 3 is the best one. Right. Like, yeah. I hear you. I, myself, personally, would have the Blair Witch ahead of The Conjuring, but I would have The Conjuring ahead of Paranormal Activity. Yeah. If that's any consultation. And I'd have it a lot higher than 98. <laughs> Here we go. 1981, number 97 is 1981's The Burning. Um, early 80s slasher, uh, Friday the 13th ripoff, basically. Yeah, I'm surprised it's on this list, but I'm not mad. It just depends, right? We got to see what's ahead of it. Yeah. All right, so number 96, I have not seen this. This is from 2015. It's a movie called They Look Like People, and it looks like some kind of a Asian film. Never heard of it. Um... Look at this. This is what the writer says. I fully expect there to be someone reading this, one of the few people who has actually seen this film, arguing that it doesn't belong on a horror list, but that would be mistaken. Okay, whatever. We're moving on. If you have seen They Look Like People, though, in the comments, please let us know if it's good or not. Um, let's see. Number 95 is 2019's In Fabric. God damn, what the fuck is this? No idea. Uh, let's see. In Fabric is one of those films where the premise could just as easily be applied toward a five-minute horror short as it could a feature film. You could say it in a couple words. A haunted dress ruins people's lives. Uh, pass. What the fuck? I don't know. Uh, number 94 is a movie called... S another one. I don't... Well, it looks like there's some interesting thing about this, though. Sator. S-A-T-U-R from 2021 directed by Jordan Graham. It says there's something in the forest, but at the same time, there's nothing much at all. A man, a cabin, and maybe, maybe something all Sator, a mumble core horror somewhere between a modern day, the witch, the Blair, Witch project and Lovecraft is a striking second feature from Jordan Graham. It's the kind of horror that trades jump scares for negative space. One that opens with imagine with imagery, your typical a 24 beasts, Saves for its finale. So it sounds like a slow burn. Mm. <laughs> Pass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank God. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you've seen this, Nick. Number 93 is 2016's The Invitation. Everybody keeps talking about this new Invitation movie, but this movie from 2016 is fucking awesome. Uh, this movie's really good. So it's about like this family get together. It, it almost starts to play out like, uh, What's that movie with uh, they wear the fox masks and they start shooting each You're other? You're next. You're next. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I've, I've seen The Invitation. Yeah, that's a good movie. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that in this list. I wouldn't really know where to put it yet, but that's 93. Number 92. From 2007. Oren Pelly's Paranormal Activity. Fair. Ahead, ahead of The Conjuring. Not fair. But um, being on the back end, back end of this list is fair. Just let me see what this person says. Um, okay, they just basically say the films was a big deal when it came out. I've been to the uh, house, um, Warren Pelly's old house. He actually filmed that in his home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw it when I was in California. Number ninety one. George A. Romero's Creep Show. Fair. Uh, I, a little bit higher, I would say, in my opinion. I think Creep Show's quite good. Maybe that's nostalgia. A lot of it, a lot of it's nostalgia. It is good as fuck, though, but it is it should be on this list. Without a, without question, I agree. I think Creep yeah. Show's awesome. Yeah. I like Creep Show too, also. So I don't think you're ready for this one. God Number 90. 
Black Christmas. Oh, dear <laughs> God. <laughs> 90 that's a top 20 to me 90 that's the <laughs> second greatest holiday horror movie ever made in my opinion halloween being first and black christmas for me being second this it's my second favorite holiday themed horror movie and it's at 90 it's at 90 <laughs> what's funny is here. what's funny is watch 89 be a real piece of shit mm, yeah yeah uh, I'm trying to think. It's gonna be like the Gallows or Slender Man or some bullshit. This is really weird for me because I love this director passionately. Love this director; he's one of my favorites, and I love this film. But there's no way in hell I would put it above Black Christmas. But I'm not gonna disparage it. Larry Cohen's The Stuff is at 89. Now, it, good movie, but over Black Christmas, you're high. Yeah. You're high. Just think about it, dude. Watch, watch. The movies that we've talked about being at number 50, like, they're not better than Black Christmas. No. All of the ones that we said, and the fact is, they're probably going to be higher on the list. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if The Grudge is on this list, I'm going to lose my mind. Which one? The, the 04 one. Oh, I mean, I think the original, over the, the Asian one will be on here, but watch, Maybe. you know what? Watch, watch the American one be on here. Watch the American um, one be on here. Christian, that movie sucks, man. I rewatched it like two years ago because I hadn't seen it since I was a teenager, and it's I remember bad. loving it. It's not good. I like The Ring, American Ring, but I don't like The yes. Grudge. Okay, I love this movie. Uh, 88 is 2008's Lake Mungo. Yeah. 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 I it, this is hard though because we've we've already talked about some bangers that are just absolutely just disregarded. And then you put, look, Lake Mungo does not. It is a good movie. I like Lake Mungo. It does not deserve to be above The Conjuring or fucking Black Christmas. Here's what I'll say in defense of this person. Fair enough. Lake Mungo is one of those movies like Session Nine. I want to be a fan of Session Nine. I've watched it, Nick. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. I, I've continuously bought it. I bought the DVD. I bought the Blu-ray. I it does not connect with me. But the fans of that movie are fucking fans of it. Oh and yeah. They, and I want to. I have no desire to want to not like it. Same His thing loves with it. same loves thing. It. And uh, yeah, but same thing with Lake Mungo. Lake Mungo crept into my bones. I'm happy to see it on this list. I still wouldn't put it over Black Christmas, but yeah. I'm very happy. And I'm gonna assume that the author of this article also agreed that yeah i mean i'm reading i'm glancing what they're saying it's a movie that just creeps into your bones but it's subjective that that's one of those things with those movies mm -hmm. uh 2014 uh, from number 87 is 2014's good night mommy i don't know what in the fuck this is never seen it <laughs> i have heard of it i've never seen it uh just let me give the audience a uh a reading about this and guys as we're talking about these please let us know which one of these are, are good to check out. We haven't seen it. We begin by joining twin toe headed nine year old brothers, Lucas and Elias, as they are, as they explore the rural paradise of their new home, swimming, swimming in azure, pure lakes and casually spelunking through nearby so, caves, ostensibly untouched for century. Yeah, whatever. I, I'm not reading all this. No. And we got a hundred of these, yeah. so we can't, yeah. We can't. Number 86 is 1941's The Wolfman. Lon Chaney Jr. I Fair. can't, I can never disrespect the Universal Monsters. No, no. Being on the list. The Wolfman's not my favorite. My favorite is Dracula and Creature from the Black Lagoon, but Wolfman's good. Okay. Number 85 is 1962's Carnival of Souls. I do like that movie a lot. Alice Cooper talked about being a big fan of that movie, and I, I watched it because of him, and that's really good. But I... Mm, not not over... I wouldn't put it over The Conjuring. But it's good. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of common themes here. Not over Black Christmas. Not over The Conjuring. Okay, this movie's <clears throat> cool. 84 is two, 2006's The Host. Uh, I, I remember Cinemasker talked about this movie. It's a, it's a, I think it's a Japanese film. It's Korean or Japanese. I can't remember. 
Uh, but it's, it's, like, it's Korean. Yeah. Yeah. Big worm creature thing. Mm -hmm. That's a cool movie. Dude, they act that movie was so big in the country that they built a massive statue for it. That's mm -hmm. for the movie. I saw a picture of it the other day. Yeah, yeah it's a neat movie, but yeah, I'll just sound like a broken record. You y'all already know what I'm gonna say. I think they're including legacy for some of these films in t in terms of what makes it the best. You know, mm -hmm. number eighty three is 2017's A Dark Song, Liam Gavin directed. Never seen it. Me neither. So if if people if the Dark Song is good, please let us know. Number 82, 1956's The Bad Seed. The Bad Seed is one of the most disturbing American portraits of pure psych psych psychopathy or sociopath uh, sociopathy coming from the least expected of all sources, an eight-year-old girl. I've heard of this film. The piercing eyes of a little blonde pigtailed Rada are terrifying to behold, more so once we begin to suspect what lays behind our facade. Okay, so it's kind of like Alice, Sweet Alice. Mm -hmm. I've never seen Sounds, that. Before. Yeah, no. Fuck yes. Okay, number eighty-one is Brian Usna's Society, dude. This is insane. That Society has beat out Black Christmas, The Stuff, The Conjuring, Paranormal Activity. Fuck yeah, Brian. Come <laughs> on, brother. Mm. I'm just happy to see it on there. <laughs> oh my god. Actually, you're probably gonna be okay with this. I'm not. I think this is bullshit. But you're gonna, not going to be okay with this for a number of reasons. Number 80 is Sean S. Cunningham's Friday the 13th. And I am not happy about it. I think that could have uh, been number 40. It, I mean, it could have been. But, yeah, hot take, guys. Hmm. I don't know. Well, I'm not going to. No, know. you know, it's cool. You've already talked about it. You're not a big, big. You think it's boring. You think it's slow. You're not a big fan of it. No, I, I, I'm not. No, I, I like Friday the 13th. But I think in comparison to what that franchise has done, it's not. It, it's not even top three or four in that series. Like, um, yeah, in my in my opinion, in my That's opinion, cool. I, people know that people know that it's cool. See, I love it. I used to not be a big fan of it. I adore it. I think it's really spooky. I love it. But I would have put that way higher. But then again, that's probably biased on my behalf, to be honest with you. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. I fucking love this movie. Uh, num you've seen this movie. Number 79, 2015's We Are Still Here. With Barbara Crampton. Yeah. Wow. That's above fucking Friday the 13th. That's a good movie, though. It nice is movie. a good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. But like I said, common theme. Come on. It's not better than some of these movies we've already mentioned. Number 78, 1957, The Curse of Frankenstein, directed by Terrence Fisher. Hammer's going to be interesting because I like I like Hammer films, but I, I, I wouldn't know where to put these in comparison to a lot of this stuff. I, I really don't. It's hard to yeah. say. I love the Curse of Frankenstein. I love the horror of Dracula. I love Prince of Dracula, which I think is actually still damn good. But in terms of where to place these, totally subjective. Because a lot of people find these movies boring. Number 77. 2018's Hereditary. Should be higher. Higher as in like 80s or 90s or 60s or 50s? 60s or 50s. Better than Black Christmas? No, Black Christmas should be like top 15. Hereditary shouldn't be that high. But I, I would be interested to go back on that decade and find any horror movies that I felt were better. Than hereditary that's how good i think hereditary is i it, it's just i agree yeah all right 76 is a movie from 2015 this is weird i've never seen this i i doubt anybody's seen this well maybe somebody watching has seen this it's called the nightmare and get ready for this it's a documentary that made the list for best horror movies listen to this <clears throat> the nightmare may very well claim 
to the title of the most purely frightening documentary film ever made. Yes, it's a documentary from Rodney Asher, director of the similarly horror-themed documentary Room 237. I've seen Room 237. That's great. Yeah, it is. The simple structure of the film involves an in-depth interviews with eight people who all suffer from the form of sleep paralysis. Never mind. Fuck, I have seen I that. Have, That's I've on seen Netflix. This too. Yeah. Yeah. Better than Black Christmas, though? <laughs> oh, fuck no. But it is that is really good. I have seen that. I guess I forgot yeah. the name of it. Yeah, that is really good. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. All right, Nick, you ready? 75. Uh, 2012's. You like this movie. The Cabin in the Woods. Is better than Black Christmas 1974. <laughs> No, it's not. But putting it in the 70s range, I agree with. I think that that movie subverted a lot of expectations. That movie is a freaking blast. It right, that movie me off. And now I'm a fan of it, but that was not what I wanted when I was going to see uh, it. Yeah, you wanted some Evil Dead type shit, you know, and, and a lot of people did. And uh, man, Bradley Whitford getting eaten by a merman. Like, that movie rocks. Well, you know what I wanted? I wanted The Strangers. That's oh, what okay. I wanted. And for some reason, I just when I didn't get it, I was like, fuck this movie. And then Sydney would always be like, yeah, just watch it again. Watch it again. And now I think it's quite brilliant, really. 74 is 2007's Wreck, the found footage movie. Christian, unpopular opinion. I couldn't finish it. It's OK. I'm with you. I think the first one and second one are... I've got that Scream Factory box set. The third and fourth one are pretty abysmal, if I'm being honest. There, there's, a, there's something to be said about found footage. When it's too shaky and claustrophobic, and I just... I, it, it's, too, it's too much. Like, it's, it's too much for me. So, especially if it's not particularly interesting to me. I'm just like, I can't, I can't do it. I don't know if you would agree with this, but there was a found footage movie called Quarantine. I think it was found footage that mm -hmm. I actually like better. I like that better than Rick. Uh, yeah, I do too. That had a, what's her face? Uh, something Carpenter, Emily Carpenter, who played, or no, her name wasn't Emily. Something Carpenter. She played uh, Emily Rose in The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, Jennifer Carpenter. Jennifer Carpenter, yep. And that was 2008, so that was a year afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I like, yeah, I like quarantine better. Yeah. Okay. 73. Oh, I love this movie. Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Uh, great movie. Yeah, great movie. not better than Black Christmas, but yeah. Uh, fuck yeah. Um. No, Nick, I can't wait for you to start diving into these movies, but number 72 is Dario Argento's opera. Dario, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Donald Pleasance is in opera too. Uh, that's a good movie. That's conceivably the last, to a lot of people, the last great Dario movie. But opera's really good. Not better than Black Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Uh, 20, uh, number 71 is 2016's Raw. I saw that on Shudder. I like that movie a lot. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty nasty. Pretty good. Um, I wouldn't have put it on a top 100, though. I'm no. sure I could make 100 movies that wouldn't have this. Number 70, 1939, Son of Frankenstein. Again, it's hard for me to... I like that one a lot. I really do. Fair enough. There it is. I was in a I was on a Frankenstein kick when I was in high school after I read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein because we had to read it in eleventh grade and I loved that book so I just was on this kick. Yeah, <clears throat> I remember we read we read uh, in high school. I don't we didn't read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but we read Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, and I ate that shit up. That was fun. Um, I still did the Cliff Notes. I didn't read the book, but number sixty nine. Nice, Lucio Fulci's zombie that's making my top 100 without question <laughs> i mean dude like i said i i think zombies better than dawn of the dead which no i had a blast with zombies so yeah i got no problem with it being on this list zombies fucking awesome 
Number 68. Fuck yes, I love this movie. 68 is 1981's Dead and Buried. That movie fucked me up. That movie was so good. Uh, Dan O'Bannon, who um, yeah. wrote and directed uh, Return of the Living Dead, wrote this movie. And it's so good. I love this movie. Not better than Zombie, though. Got to feel like there. I feel like I've seen it. So good. So, so good. Uh, Blue Underground put out on Blu-ray and 4K. Um, I fucking love that movie. Uh, Robert England has a part in this. Uh, Grandpa Joe from Willy Wonka plays the evil doctor. I fucking love Dead and Buried. Mm. Number 67, 2015's groundbreaking film, cult phenomenon. It follows. Better than Black Christmas 20, uh, 1974. <laughs> Absolutely not, but I can't keep is, is it follows better than the conjuring. I call bullshit. No, it's not. Is it follows better than the Blair Witch Project? No. Is it follows better than uh zombie? Mm, they're so they're totally different movies. Like that's hard. I I mean I don't know. Yeah, I do. I would put it follows on a top 100 list, though. I would. I would, too. I it's funny. A lot of people hate that movie and it's it's fine. Everybody's got their opinion. I just it, it's always interesting for me when I really can't fathom what it is people don't like about a movie. If they can articulate it, that's totally fine. But when I just hear the movie is all it's got is a good soundtrack. That's it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I can't I can't get there with that no. opinion. It's hard Mika, for me to Michael Monroe is great in the movie. The I love the the fucking aesthetic to that movie too. It's not just the score, the aesthetic. It's just oh that movie. I love that movie. That movie's fantastic. Well, I like how they pulled the Napoleon Dynamite uh, vibe of like it feels old school, but then like all of a sudden Napoleon Dynamite's brothers talking about chatting with babes online, but then like, yeah, all the then there's using VHS tapes, and in this movie it seems like it's late nineties or something, and then a broad pulls out a seashell iPad or something, mm -hmm. it's like what the fuck's going on? And they're watching black and white horror movies on the TV, yeah, right. But Number director directors do that to not date their movies, and it's very them. very smart. Number 66, 1987's Catherine Bigelow directed Near Dark. That's definitely making my list. Yeah, not better than Black Christmas. <laughs> Number 65, wow, Lucio gets more love here with The Beyond, which um, I love. Not better than Zombie, though, but that's a great movie. The Beyond's really good. That's cool that they're giving love to Lucio on here. Jesus Christ. Uh, number 64 is the original 1942 Cat People, which I have seen. And it's weird for me, man, because it's like I like these old movies. I'll watch them, but I guess it's one of those things where you just had to be able to really see that film when it came out and be a part of that world. And, you know, this was probably yes. like fucking hereditary to people when this was released. You know, this movie scared the shit out of people, but yeah. I'm um, keeping it with the ham. Well, that wasn't hammer, but 63 is the horror of Dracula 1958. I'll give that. That's fair. I guess. Um, number 62, Richard Donner's 1976, the omen. That's way too low for the omen. It, yes, it is too low, but that's it should be on the favorites. list. Yeah. That's one of my all time favorites, man. I fucking love the omen. Oh, God. I love The Omen. Number 61. What the fuck? I got... Oh, God. Is it Nightmare? No, no. It's not even that. I'm sorry. I like this film, but this is fucking bullshit. What movie did I just say for 62? The Omen. Okay. Guess what 61 is? Ginger Snaps. Oh, fuck off. Over the Omen. I Over like Black Ginger Snaps. Christmas. This is fucking insanity. Who oh, wrote this list? I don't know. Um, oh, God. 
Like they're making me not like Ginger Snaps, and I like the film, but you just picked the Omen at sixty-two, and now we went from the Omen to Ginger Snaps. Oh fuck me in the face! Kids these days. It's probably a fifty-year-old. Oh. Uh, number sixty is Less Diabolics from nineteen fifty-five. Have not seen that. Probably never nope. will. Number fifty-nine, directed by Rob Reiner, nineteen ninety, Stephen King's Misery. It's a good movie. Very good. I'm not a little gonna... too high. A little too high, but number fifty-eight. Michael Doherty's Trick or Treat. Damn straight. This absolutely goes on a top 100. It's not better than Black Christmas or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, but it belongs on this list. Well, how do you feel about it being number 58 in general? Where would that be well, in your top 100? Just rough guesstimate. Mm, Mine would probably, it'd probably be around here. 50, 60. Yeah. I'd say. I mean, I that mean, movie's a, it's a classic to me. It is. I mean, how do you yeah. not love Trick or Treat? Um, number 57. I've heard of this film. I've never seen it. It's called We Need to Talk About Kevin. Um, I'm assuming this is from some other country. Maybe Russia or something. I don't know. But I've never heard. I, I, I know about this movie, but I've never seen it. We Need to Talk About Kevin concerns the experience of a mother struggling with. I just thought about something. If the Babadook is on this list, I'm going to be. Dude, pissed. I'm done. I I'm hate that movie. Done. That, that movie. Overrated piece of shit I've ever seen. Fucking hate it. Hate it so much. And when I got with my wife and we were talking about, like, when we first got together and we're talking about horror movies that we have, like, that she hasn't seen or I haven't seen. And she was like, I love the Babadook. Have you seen the Babadook? And Fuck I'm like, that movie. I should have, you know, oh my God, that movie, no. That movie I, sucks. I hate it. I'm usually pretty reserved about saying how much I think something's an overrated piece of shit. I really am. But that movie, I'll never forget. Everybody thought it was so good. The movie is shitty. The kid doesn't shut the fuck up. It's not scary. It's, it's not even good quality. It's not even high quality. Like it's, it's, it's overrated as fuck. No, I, and that the Babadook is the reason why I was worried about watching Hereditary. It was the reason I was worried because it, it just a few years before Hereditary, it was the same thing. It took the world by storm. Everyone, it's a classic. Everyone said the same shit about Hereditary. And I said, y'all tricked me once with the Babadook. And luckily, Hereditary was that good. But yeah, the Babadook can suck my left nut. Yeah, and it could suck my only nut I have. 56, Oni Baba from 1964. Uh, Oni Baba will make you sweat and give you chills all at once with its power found in Shindo's blendo of atmosphere and eroticism. It's a sexy film. It's a dangerous film. And in its very last moments, a terrifying, unnerving film where morality comes full circle to punish its protagonists for their, fo for their foibles and their sins. Uh, it's a 60s Japanese film, it looks like. Uh, ooh, number 55 is 2014 Starry Eyes. I like that movie, but fuck. Over the nah, Omen and Black Christmas. Yeah. It's a Get good movie, though. Here. It is a good movie. Um, number 54 is 1988's The Vanishing. Have you seen The Vanishing? I, I yeah. think... I think it's okay. I'm not a big, big fan of it. Okay, good. I was going to say, I'm not a huge fan of it either. Top 100 list, no way. I remember people were pushing that, me to check that movie out I, I don't, on a stream or something before, and I did check it out. I was just like, this this is this is it? Yeah. Um, That's how I felt about the Poughkeepsie tapes, honestly. Christian kept pushing me to watch it, and I watched it, and I was like, it was fine. I love it. I love it. Uh, 53 is 1963's Black Sabbath from Mario Bava. I can never go against Mario Bava. It's a legend. Without him, there is no Dario Argento or, uh, or Lucio Fulci or uh, Lamberto. None of those guys. So I'll give that. I'll give uh, Black Sabbath its due. Number 52 is We Are What We Are from 2013. That's a good fucking movie, dude. Never seen it. Oh, dude. It's it's good. Um, I don't want to spoil anything about it because I, I can. I think a lot of people probably haven't seen this. I kept hearing. I used to Google on Netflix like five, six years ago, like scariest movies on Netflix, and it constantly I saw "We Are What We Are," and it's about these two sisters, and 
it, it's fucked. It's pretty fucked. So anyway, we'll move. We'll move on. Number 51 is Wes Craven's. Scream. Uh, you probably won't like what I have to say. You'd say it's too high. I'd say it should probably be between 30 and 40. I think the fact that Scream is almost 20 or is 10 above the Omen is enough to make me want to run into traffic. But that is not Scream's fault. That is this person's subjective or yeah, th- th- it's it's their opinion and their opinion is wrong because <laughs> they they have a lot of things about Black Christmas for Christ's sake, but yeah. But then again, dude, if this person is much younger than me, like remember I was telling Sean Clark this, dude, Scream is the new Halloween. Not just that, even if you're not a huge fan of Scream, just for its cultural impact, it is definitely a top 50, I think, horror movie. Like, I really do think it is. That's fair. I mean, I just, I personally, I like it, but I like some of the post-Scream slashers more than Scream. But that's just me, dude. But okay, 51 is Scream. Number 50 is 2007's The Orphanage. No. Fuck no. (laughs) Uh, There you go. The Orphanage. Uh, Number 49, John Car. The reason I watch this is because of John Carpenter talking about it all the time. 1960s Eyes Without a Face. And um, I didn't think it was scary at all, to be honest with you. (laughs) It's it's an old movie. Next. Number 48 is 2005's. Great movie. Can't agree with the placement, but I'm not angry about it. The Descent. Oh, what a fantastic movie. It's good. I'd put it top 50 all time. I would. Not above Black Christmas. Not above not above a lot of things, but yeah. The Omen thing is just really... That's, that's what's really pissed me off. Not even Black Christmas at this point. But I like this Descent a lot. 47, David Cronenberg's Videodrome. I love me some Videodrome. Mm. I knew Cronenberg was going to show up on here soon enough. Oh, not only that, I guarantee you we're going to see scanners. We'll probably see the fly. Yeah. I just thought about something. If the thing is not in the top 10, I'm done. I'm running into traffic. Number 46, Mario Baba's Black Sunday. 100%. Black Sunday is a fucking great film. You'll get zero, zero complaints from me on Black Black Sunday. <laughs> Um, number 45 from 1973, Don't Look Now, directed by Nicholas Roeg. I've never seen this. Does me neither. Good. It does look good, though. It says, Don't Look Now is one of cinema's great, tre- uh, tre- I don't know what this word is, treatises, T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-S, on grief that falls within the realm of horror and cinema. And emotionally- Treatises. Tre- treatises. Yeah, tre- okay, treatises on grief that fall within the realm of horror cinema, an emotionally devastating film that likewise functions as a masterclass on the use of visual and oral light motifs, L E I T M O I T F S motifs. But what why is there L E I T it's one word, L E I T M O T I F S. I don't know. I don't know. You, All right. You you said oral and I was just making faces at the camera, so Yeah. Fair. Right, let's move on. Number 44 is 1965's Repulsion, directed by 1965's Repulsion, directed by Roman Polanski. I have never watched a Roman Polanski film that I like. Besides The Pianist. Besides The Pianist, I am not... I love The Pianist. Uh, what? Have you seen that movie? Don't bullshit. No, just, just, just say it again. The Pianist. It's the name of the fucking movie, dude. He's a piano player. I know you just know how it sounds. All right, but for real, <laughs> Christian I, says I love the pianist. I love the pianist. It's like the fucking episode of Family Guy that Dutch baker was like, "Oh, oh I'm okay. making you a cock out of dude." <laughs> but I'm not a Polanski fan, it, and it's ain't got nothing to do with him. as all the shit he pulled, dude. I just don't like much most of his films. They bore the shit out of me. 
Yeah, he's a over. He's a pretentious fuck with his I, filmmaking. I think Rosemary's Baby is fucking terrible. Oh, it's gonna be on this list. I, I hate that movie. Uh, the only interesting thing about that movie, Nick, no bullshit. At the last shot of Rosemary's Baby, they show a uh, uh, this guy looking at the kid. That guy that they show, there's a documentary. He ended up becoming a massive cult leader. And and there's a <laughs> there's a documentary called Holy Hell. And if you watch it, that's what you'll say by the time you get done with it because it's insane. He wrangles all these people, brainwashes them, rapes all the men because he was a he was a he was a homosexual guy, charged him money to have these meetings with God where he gave you a one on one with God. And what he ended up doing was just raping all the guys. They gave all their money to this guy. Then finally shit started hitting the fan and he flew to Hawaii and got out of the country. And he's still doing it till this very day. It's the most insane cult documentary I've ever seen. Sounds like the type of company that Roman Polanski would keep. But yeah, I've always found Rosemary's Baby to be overrated. So yeah, the (laughs) Sentinel, I don't like it. The uh uh, the, the, what's that other one from the seventies? Uh, I forget, but I I just don't like them. I don't like them. All right, number forty three is this is interesting because they combine the remake and the the original, The Fly, fifty eight and eighty six. There's David Cronenberg again. Yeah, that's my favorite remake of all time, though. Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Maybe a little higher. I I love The Fly, man. To me, that's top twenty for me personally. I I think that movie's brilliant on a number of levels. Okay, number 42, Brian De Palma, a very good director, unlike Roman Polanski. Carrie. Thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit high. I I I might put Carrie in the 30s. Oh, you'd put it higher. May, maybe. Just for cultural impact. Wait a minute. But- Is Pet Cemetery going to be on this list? I wouldn't be surprised if it's not, but uh, that would be a shame. But Pet Cemetery is better than Carrie, right? Yes. Yeah. Pet Cemetery for me would probably be like top 25. I'm dead serious. I love Carrie. I, I just watched it the other day. I really liked it. I always forget, like, oh, it's a really good movie. I just never get the urge to want to watch it, but I, it is a good movie. But I think Pet Cemetery's. Top two the, or three, of the best the, the, King and movies. you know the Carrie remake is a blast. I really enjoy that remake. I'll probably never watch the remake again. God, you suck. I'm sorry. Forty one behind the mask: the rise of Leslie Vernon. I fucking love this movie. Too high. I'd go forty. <laughs> no. I love this movie. It's 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 bizarre placement. There's no doubt about it. But the rise of Leslie Vernon is a cool flick. It is. Wow, just <laughs> dude, it it the rise of Leslie Vernon butt fucked Black Christmas twenty uh two nineteen seven. I keep wanting to say two thousand nineteen. <laughs> twenty nineteen. The rise of Leslie Vernon just butt fucked the omen. Black Christmas, the original. The Conjuring, Conjuring, the Fly remake, dude. The Rise of Leslie Vernon just said, "Screw all of y'all. I'm better than all of y'all." Yeah, no. Number forty, Sam Raimi's. Take a guess. Oh, I'm. Oh God, it's either. Think of what it probably shouldn't be and then say it. It, I mean, it probably shouldn't be um, Drag Me to Hell. No. Number 40. It should be The Evil Dead because Evil Dead 2 should be higher, but it's probably Evil Dead 2. It's Evil Dead 2. Yeah, fuck that. I I I know some people that prefer the first Evil Dead over the second one. I, I do too, but 40, 40. There are 39 better horror movies than Evil Dead 2. No. No. You cannot convince me of that. I would never in a million years say that Evil Dead is better than Evil Dead 2, by the way. No. Oh, my God. Fuck! Damn it! 
Christian would say Army of Darkness, though. Number 39. Nightmare on Elm Street. No, no. It's on the fucking... No, no. The shittiest, most overrated piece of garbage is number 39. Give me the year it came out. Dude, we were talking about it just a few minutes ago. The shittiest, most overrated piece of shit. Just give me the year. 2014. Oh, my fucking God. It made it. God no. damn it! No. The fucking no. Babadook is number 39! Fuck this guy. Fuck this ah! guy. I'm gonna find you. I, your list is bullshit. Ah! I would put the Babadook on a top 20 worst. Top worst. 20 movies I'd love to burn every copy of. Number one, the Babadook. God damn it. God almighty. 39. The Babadook is better than the fly in Evil Dead 2? You guys need to find this guy on social media. Harass no, him. No, no, no. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, number 38. At least they got a good, good move. I'm going to get you to watch this soon, Nick. Number 38 is Lamberto Bava's Demons. This is the perfect follow-up for your zombie this is like this movie goes out of its way to feel American. Motley Crue soundtrack. Go oh, yeah. West is in here. Demons is fucking awesome. Um, I want to be upset uh, still about the placement of some of this stuff, but the fact that at least Demons, a good movie, just fought, beat out Babadook, we're cool. Oh my God. Number 37. Number 37. Is this a bad? Oh, my God. Is John Carpenter's Halloween. (laughs) Number 37. I'm not. Look, I'm not bullshitting you. Here it is. Uh, The glare is getting it, but it's number 37. (laughs) Nightmare on the Street beat out Halloween. (laughs) Honestly, I don't care if you're a Halloween fan or not. To say there's 36 better horror films than John Carpenter's Halloween, complete (laughs) lie. Complete oh bold faced lie, dude. This shit is we are, we but are, but this list, this list lost credibility when they had Blair Witch at 100. He literally started bad, so you can almost reverse this list. This no, you, no, you, oh, wait a minute, you can't do that. This is a joke. Number 37 is John Carpenter's Halloween. Watch this motherfucker put something at number one, like I don't even know. I'm just trying to think of an abomination. Black Christmas 2019 is going to be number one. Number 36. Robert Eggers 2016 film. The Witch. No. No. It, it Okay, The Witch deserves to be on this list, but fucking come on, man. Chris, I can't, I can't do this. Dude, they put... Hol- Look... I love it's it's so funny. Like sometimes I've got to calibrate because I gotta make sure whenever I'm poking fun at Halloween fans, you can't see my Halloween tattoos on me. That is bullshit. Halloween. Here's the thing, Nick. I don't know how you feel about this. I do believe in everybody having opinions. And everybody, yes. if everybody should have their opinion. But here's the thing. I also believe that there are some universal truths in the world. I do. I think movies like The Shining, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Night of the Living Dead. It's not really up for discussion. No. You know what I mean? Like, I think there are some universal truths. And the fact that Halloween is 39 is fucked up. (laughs) The Witch is a, an amazing film. It's not better than Halloween. It's not better than Halloween. Uh, number 35. God damn it. Fuck Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> 1968. That's a top uh, 10 for me. Top 10. Yeah. I mean, this guy. I mean, I can't wait to see what his number one is. I can't fucking wait. <laughs> Uh, all right, George, you made it in the top 35, George. <laughs> Not you, John. Sorry. Uh, well, he, he still has a chance. 
No, he'll get the thing. He'll get the thing. Number 34, I haven't seen this film. 1920s, The ca- the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. I've seen clips of it because they show it in the Nightmare on Elm Street mini documentary on that DVD. Uh, Nick, what was your number 50? I said Insidious. Insidious? That's not on here yet. There's a chance. What did my number what was my number 50? Do you remember? Um the M. Night Shyamalan's the six cents. Yeah, the, the, the six cents, yeah. <clears throat> number 33. M. Night Shyamalan's the six cents. Not even his best movie. I I don't think so either, but I I, I think if you took a poll. But it, it, it should be, yeah, it should be on this list. Number 33? Not I think that it should high. be I think it should be number I, I guess 50 would have been a fair number. Yeah. But wow. Signs Signs is his best movie. I agree. Dude, okay, number 32. All right, we just hit the hour mark, so this actually seems like it's working out pretty good. Number 32 mm-hmm. is Guillermo del Toro's The Devil's Backbone. Huh? No. No. I've seen it. No, it's fine. I like Crimson yeah. Peak more than Devil's Backbone. Yeah, and I wouldn't even put the Crimson Peak in the top one hundred. No. Number thirty-one. Well, Nick, Misery Loves Company. Nightmare on Elm Street. A Nightmare on Elm Street. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. We have God damn. already four titans of industry. In Halloween, Black Christmas, The Omen, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and up uh, five, and and Blair Witch, five that aren't even in the top thirty. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, dude. And most horror fans would put all five in the top thirty. Again, universal truths. I just, I Jim. think, I think we 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 have those in this world. I really do. No, we do. Number thirty. Clive Barker's Hellraiser. See, sometimes you just want to take the W when you can when it comes to this yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. Hellbound's better, but th- I think that this is Hellraiser would be 20, 20 to tw- well, Hellbound, but let's just say Hellraiser and Hellbound. Let's just say both of them because they work perfectly as a one two punch. <clears throat> would be perfect in the 20 to 30 range. I don't really argue with that. Right. Okay, number 29, 1970. This is, I respect this. 29 is 1973's The Wicker Man. I love the original Wicker Man. I love the, I love the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. <laughs> the Nick Cage one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, number 28, George C. Scott's The Changeling. That's very interesting. Mm. Great movie. That's pretty- a lot- a lot of people find the movie boring. I love that movie, but I it's a slow burn. But I'm a big George C. Scott fan. Not better than Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street. Let's let's get out of here with that. No. I'd say 40. Number 27. I respect this. I really do. Uh, Dario Argento's Suspiria at number 27. That movie. Fair. That movie's uh, legendary, man. Yeah. Oh boy, twenty six. I'm I'm afraid to look. Oh wow, the remake at number twenty six is Invasion of the Body Snatchers, seventy eight. Well, holy shit! Mm. Good movie, but I mean, twenty six. Twenty six is what it says. Yeah, it's not twenty six. Good. Twenty five, nineteen sixty three's The Haunting. feedback sure sure (laughs) (laughs) do you see the remake from 99 of course i did owen wilson gets decapitated by a big lion thing well you know it's funny when i was a little kid that movie scared the shit out of me but scared the fuck out of me yeah i haven't seen it since then but it's pg-13 which is just crazy to think no it wasn't a lion thing it's the the fireplace is a lion's mouth isn't it fireplace thing i yeah i remember And isn't the isn't the mama from The Conjuring in that too? Uh Lily Taylor, I think so. Also Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yeah. 
24 is 1960s Peeping Tom. Okay. Okay, this, this guy. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. This movie is good, and I like this guy. He, to me, he's on a good trajectory. But respectfully, and I think he would agree. I really do. Oh, I, here we he, go. It's Jordan Peele, isn't it? Get out is at number 23. Jordan yeah, Peele would, would be the first one to say, okay, that's a little high. Jordan Peele's Get Out is better than the fucking Omen? Halloween. Halloween? Black Christmas. Nightmare on Elm Street. No, get the fuck out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> get the fuck out. That yeah. should have been the name of the movie. Jordan no. Peele. And, and, and I love Get Out. It's my favorite movie of his. I it love is. Get Out. I, but... I rewatched it, dude, and it's, it is good. It's good. It is good. But that's bullshit. Mm. Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Jordan Peele get the fuck out. <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> Number 22. Fuck yes. George A. Romero's Day of the Dead. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, yeah. hard, to, it's hard to be upset about a high placement for that film. Wherever yeah. Yeah. Day, dawn, night, yeah, I think all of those. If you put any of those in that range, I'm not going to argue with it. All right, here we go. 21. Roman, put you to sleep, Polanski's Rosemary's Baby. I fucking knew this guy was going to put this one so high. One of the most overrated movies ever made. I can't take it, dude. This is, I am not a Polanski guy whatsoever. No. No, 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 no. Okay, number 20. Stuart Gordon's 1985 Reanimator. Look at Charlie Band. Look at Charlie Band getting a top 20 on this list, dude. Come on, Charlie, man. Come on, Charlie Band. Maybe Christian Puppet Spider Master. Maybe Puppet Master's going to be in the top 10. <laughs> Oh, God. Reanimator would be on this list, but not 20. Not 20. Number 19 is 1922's Nosferatu. I this, mean, guy you... just, this guy just picked it out of the hat. Like, well, yeah, I got to put Nosferatu <laughs> on here. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Number 18. Toby Hooper's Poltergeist. That's good placement. I'd put it in I'd put it in 10 to 20. Very interesting. Oh, you disagree? No, no, no. No, no. I'm just okay. saying I I I don't think Poltergeist is has is a patch on Elm Street's ass, Halloween's no. ass. No. <laughs> we did this, are, we did this are, list. I, do we, the, need to, we need to do an episode where we make a 100 list. The we make one. We got to make the addendum. Yeah. Yeah. If it, I, people listening, if you want that, if you want the addendum to this, drop put drop a like on this and drop your comment and say you want our version, the real list. Also, if you guys like this, we'll do a worst horror movies list that someone wrote up, and we'll go over that one too. Yeah. Number seventeen is my favorite movie of all time. Return of the Living Dead. Wow. Fuck yeah, dude. 17. God damn. My favorite zombie movie, so I don't argue with that. Fuck yes, dude. Whoever this person is, they just they just they just got to get out of jail card for the next two or three unless they piss me off immediately. Number 16. David Lynch's eraser head. This is an interesting choice. I, I'm not going to be upset about it because David Lynch films are bizarre and you either become a David Lynch fanatic or you just don't like his movies at all. And I, that's just fair because he's very eclectic and I love eraser. It's my favorite movie he's done. I like eraser head. <clears throat> I wouldn't put it that high, but I like eraser head. You have got to be fucking kidding me. This has to be a joke. 
the worst zombie movie ever made is number 15. And I'm not kidding. This is a dog water film. It was shot with an Atari 2600. Children of the Living Dead. No. I, I prefer Children of the Living Dead over this movie. Number 15, ladies and gentlemen, if you can believe it or not, is 28 Days Later. This you movie be, sucks. You have got to be fucking kidding me. And if you're a fan, I know someone's listening right now that's a fan of this movie. I'm sorry. This movie blows. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's bad. It is bad. Even if you like this movie, number 15. <sighs> ah! Better than fucking Halloween. <laughs> Number 14 is a Asian film I haven't seen. Kwaidan, K-W-A-I-D-A-N from 1964. Is, God, is Godzilla going to make this list? Like, <laughs> dude, the, the top, listen, the top 10, ladies and gentlemen, could be fucking anything at this point. It could be shot on video movies for all we know. I'll walk off set. <laughs> off, walk off. <laughs> off, off set. I'll walk off set. <laughs> Number 13. I'm scrolling. Here we go. Okay. Okay. My wife would agree with this. Number 13 is James Wales, The Bride of Frankenstein from 1935. I know friends like Lorne. That's his all-time favorite movie. My wife loves this film. It's one of the most legendary universal films. I'll accept that. I'm assuming you're fine with that as well. I will accept it. Yes. <clears throat> All right. I'm pissed off. Number 12. This is number 12. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stop for a second and take this into context. Number 12 is... to. Go ahead. No, I was adding to the stop. Oh, number 12 is Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Number 12! Apparently there's 11 horror movies better than TCM. I could there's... accept top 10, but when you get out of that, What's really going to piss me off is number 11. I haven't even seen it yet. Now I'm fired up. Christian, there's 36 movie, horror movies better than Halloween. Okay. They picked a good follow-up. Number 11 is Jonathan Demme's The Silence of the Lambs, which at least this person put it on a horror list because it's a goddamn horror film, people. Stop calling it, it a psychological thriller. What the fuck movie. is that? Wouldn't that be a horror, a psychological thriller? That's yeah, a horror movie. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a horror fan. I'm a psychological thriller fan. Yeah. What's Same. up, guys? Christian Hanna, psychological thriller here. Like, what the fuck are we talking about here? <laughs> are you okay with that being at number 11? Yeah. Yeah. Number but 10. this top 10 is going to suck. Well, what do you say we get right into it? Do it. Number 10 is Jonathan Landis's An American Werewolf in London. <laughs> it's a great movie, but That's like, number 30, 35. Yeah. <sighs> number 9. A movie none of, none of us have even seen. 1961's The Innocents, directed by Jack Clayton. Favorite movie of all time. <laughs> Number eight, Georgie, you made it, buddy. George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Okay. <laughs> Number seven, Steven Spielberg's Jaws. Top five. I agree. Number six. What the fuck? 2008's Let the Right One In? Number six? I'm done. I'm do Let Me In is better than Let the Right One In. What is going on here? I, I I'm I'm reading this right. I this is <sighs> these are prescriptions. What in God's name? Oh, let's just go. Let's just keep going. Number five, 
John Carpenter's The Thing. Which I am okay with that. Top five, yeah. Number four, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Which I'm glad it's not number one, because I don't think... That was my guess, but I don't think it's number one. It's not. I think if you said that the best film is... For instance, The Exorcist, that's fair. You know what? I watch. Number one's going to be Dracula. How much you want to bet? 1931's Dracula, 32's Dracula. That's gonna There's be a one. few movies that haven't been mentioned yet that have me very worried. Number four is Psycho. Number three, do you want to take a guess? The Shining. No. Number three is Ridley Scott's Alien. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh man. Uh so there you go. Number two. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Oh buddy. I didn't see Doctor uh sleep in this list. Oh, this guy <laughs> lost credibility at a hundred. <laughs> It's so funny that somebody could easily have the Blair Witch Project in their top ten. Like I don't know, I could I could totally see it, and I wouldn't agree with that either. But I would be like, well, it is great, but <laughs> to be at a hundred too. Number yeah. one, okay. What do you think? Number it's got to be The Exorcist. It's a. It's got to be. It's got to be The Exorcist. It is in fact William Freakin's The Exorcist. Christian, before we unpack that list overall let me just let the viewers know this person made a top 100 horror movies list they didn't put dracula on it they didn't put saw on it they didn't put child's play on it they didn't put Candyman on it they didn't put pet cemetery on it they didn't put phantasm on it they didn't put phantasm on it they didn't put i'm just looking at my shelf right now just we're just gonna maniac they didn't put the psycho oh, psycho two even. Oh my god. They didn't put any of the iterations of it, whether Exorcist, it be the nineties mini miniseries. Ex Exorcist three wasn't even on it. Exorcist three. No, it wasn't. They didn't put the fog on it. They didn't oh my god, this guy sucks. I mean <laughs> sucks. <laughs> This is so funny, man. They didn't put the ring on it. Or not even ring you. Like <sighs> or Juan, the original grudge. Dude. Fright they didn't put Night. Fright Night. Last house on the left. The hills have eyes. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> oh my God. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. <laughs> Wow, this guy. I can't believe that James Wan only got one movie on this list. Yeah, I, I said Saul, Saul would absolutely make a top 100. Fuck you if you say it wouldn't. Oh, that torture. Oh, one. dude. I think, Saul, I think the twist in Saul alone puts that in top 100 territory. Without question. I would have put that at like number 32, 33, somewhere between there or 40. I don't, I don't know. Oh, man. God. This this guy, man. This fucking guy. Godzilla didn't make the list. No. Harry Potter didn't make the list. <laughs> oh man. I, I was looking at my shelf, just looking at stuff that would dude, the Amityville horror didn't make the, the list. Amityville horror, yeah. Wow. I'm looking at my shelf right now too, and I'm just looking at ones. The fun house didn't make the list. But hey, reanimator is number twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Charlie Man. Uh, made it. My my bloody Valentine didn't make the list. I mean, um, let's 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 be real. I love the burning. My bloody Valentine dog is walks. Better. Yes. Burning. Yeah. I mean, dude, this list sucks, man. It sucks. Let me ask you this. 
Is Terrifier 2 making your top 100? Yes. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> also, uh, none of the Insidious movies. I would have put one of those in there for sure. I would have put the first one. Absolutely. In a top 100? Yes. I would yes. put Signs in there for sure. Signs. Oh, my God. No signs. Oh, God almighty. This is awful. I mean, my, I think one of the most egregious ones, dude, is Pet Cemetery. Yeah. The Pet Cemetery. And- Pet and Cemetery and is like number. Horror. I, I, I'd have to think about it, but like initially, I'm thinking about it. I, I'd put Pet Cemetery around like 18, 19, maybe even higher. I, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to really think about it because I'm gonna. I would really want to be completely objective about it. Not a single child's play movie. Not a single one in no. a top 100. No. No just, child's play. Just a joke. No child's play. Um, no nightmare 2010. Not only that, like, dude, I wouldn't have even had, like, if you're going to put a where I, I almost feel like they hedged their, whoever did the list, hedged their bets a little bit with like, no silver bullet. I was going to say no silver. I, I, for me, silver bullet, the howling, I'd take those over American werewolf at this point. I love American werewolf, but Christian, you mentioned one of them that is absolutely unforgivable to leave off of this list. Um, Is is that phantasm? Fright night. Fright Night, yeah, ridiculous. What? Every, from everything about Fright Night, from the name of the film to the poster to the movie to the cast to the special <sighs> effects to the soundtrack to the, everything about Fright Night is perfect, but it's not good enough. Um, 28 Days Later is good enough, but Fright Night's not good enough. <laughs> you see, now what I can't. Ass clown. Now I can't wait for us to do this list and people react this way to us. <laughs> Christian. But the Baba Duck is not gonna be on my list. What's that? The Strangers. Yeah, that would have been easily in my top 100. Oh my god. Easily in my top 100. Like Cannibal Holocaust is making my list all day long. Um Maniac. Maniac. I said um, Maniac, sure. but oh Maniac. My god. Maniac is in fact my I did a video where I talked about just non-franchise slasher films. That's my number one. <sighs> Without question, it's Maniac. It's not even close. It's my number one. I mean, if we did this list today, too, like, I would put X on there on a top 100. Absolutely. See, so now, if the people enjoyed this and they want us to do a version, we'll do it. Guys, I'm tapped out, man. I'm I'm so upset. I, it's not even just the Halloween thing, man. Like, whatever. Like, of course No, this, dude, that's bullshit. It's like, bullshit that there's 36 horror movies better than Halloween. Dude, shut your mouth. You are <laughs> a goddamn liar. No serious film critic would ever say that. Not uh, one. <laughs> hey, you know what, dude? This one did. In all seriousness, though... Um, I don't want to say the the uh, person's name that did the list. In all seriousness, you definitely gave me some fun entertainment reading your list. So at the very least, if we do our version, there will be somebody out there that hears what we say and flips out, which is great. Uh, yeah, but I can imagine the viewers right now that they're listening to us go over it and they, they just heard this whole list and they're probably thinking of movies that we didn't even think of yet that they're like, they left this off their fucking list. And it's like... I'm sure this this is going to piss a lot of people off. You put you know, Friday the 13th on there, but you didn't put the final chapter? You didn't yeah. put, like, oh, God. Nightmare on Elm Street isn't even, like, the consensus best nightmare movie. Most people say it's Dream, Dream Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, Dream Warriors. Like, oh, God. <clears throat> Dude, I don't know. No Children of the Corn. I mean, this this... A top 100 movie list should be thriving with Stephen King titles. Should be chock full of Stephen King titles. Dude, no Cujo. Cujo, Children of the Corn, Silver Bullet. Mm. Uh, I would have put. I would have put even. Yeah, I, I any of the it stuff. I yeah. I would have. I would have taken any of it. Um, Carrie made the list, which is good. At least you got Carrie. Um, Misery made the list, uh, but. Those wouldn't even be the films. Like, like if I'm putting pets, if I'm putting Stephen King movies on there, I'm putting, 
I'm putting Christine. I'm putting Cujo. I'm putting, uh, you know, fuck uh, it, dude. Gremlins. Gremlins. Where the should, fuck is Gremlins? That should have been on here all day long. All day long. <sighs> no Godzilla. You know. But they would they would throw you for a curveball and have some cool stuff like demons or Return of Living Dead up really high. It's just I couldn't get a gauge on this person. You know, I really couldn't get a get a, I can't get a gauge on their their taste. So Christmas Vacation 2. <laughs> Should have been on this list. Uh, mm. I almost fuck with you, and I was I was gonna say number number thirty two, a nightmare on Elm Street remake. <laughs> you should have said Freddy's dead. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to say it with a, with a, keeping a straight face. Wow, oh, man. man, that 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 list sucked. It was it was it was interesting. It was very interesting. Shit, I'd put House of a Thousand Corpses on my hundred. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You joke, but I, I don't give a I don't give a motherfuck. It's 2023. I'm going in bulletproof vest, guns a blazing. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 is going to be leading the charge on my list. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it would be in my top 25. I wasn't joking. I was saying it's like you know, subjectively for me, but I knew it wouldn't be on this list, but yeah, I think, that's, I think a lot of people would have a Rob Zombie film in their top 100 though. One no, of them, none of the piranha movies, none of them, none of them. No, the spawning. No, <laughs> Jim Cameron. Oh man. Well, Nick, closing thoughts. Do you think people are going to want us to do our own version of this? I do, and I feel like we owe it to the people to rectify this mistake because this was a awful, awful mistake. This was wow, wow. Um, and you know what I think that episode should be, Christian? I think that episode should be you and I both make a top 100 ourselves. We go over it together, and we find out how close we are on certain ones, which ones we left off of each other's list, you know, whatever it may be. But I guarantee you, we're probably going to have like 80 of the same movies on both lists. How long? My, here's my concern about that, though. Should we do a uh, 100 or should we both do 50 each? And that will accumulate. We'll do 50 in no particular order, too. That way we can just have 50 movies we think should be on that list. And then the other person can have, and, and we obviously share that with the other person. And then the other person, 50 more. And we won't go in any particular order. We will just say, these are the 50 that we think should be on a top 100. Or these are the 100 we think. Yeah, I like that. If the audience is cool with that, that would, that would, be, that would be pretty fun. So, but guys, we do, have a, we do have a Friday the 13th coming up this week. So, um... You should be seeing you, Nita. On yeah, we're gonna Friday. be film. We're gonna be filming back to back nights, y'all. As we're recording, it's Saturday night. We'll be back at it tomorrow night for our Friday the Thirteenth episode that you guys will be getting on Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, so that's exciting. It's always cool when we get a Friday the Thirteenth. But guys, this was the top one hundred movies list according to Paste Magazine. Uh, I had a blast. So thank you for the entertainment, Paste Magazine. No killer clowns. No uh, the crazies. Yeah. Uh, what a travesty. Anyway, we hope you are ready for some fun Unita episodes this 2023. And uh, this is one hell of a way to start the year. We appreciate you listening with us. If you're watching this on YouTube, please drop a like. Let us know your thoughts on this list. And if you're listening to this while you're driving, hopefully we got you to your destination in a little bit more of an enjoyable way. Keep me in your thoughts and prayers for how I'm going to digest this list and try to move on with my life. Same. Oh, my God. Honestly, but it, Christian, you know. What? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> you make your own list. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Anyway, guys, we thank you for listening. This is the Unita Horror Podcast. Take care, and we'll see you guys 
next time.